<laughs> they want to get back in it after that last game. I mean, so what? That uh, King R on the disruptor. Yeah, again, we uh, really just see him have a great, great time. And, and of course, just the way it worked with the bounty as well. Uh, not just from uh, kind of t in terms of setting up with a glimpse of the tracks, but the. Uh, in terms of setting up with a glimpse of the tracks, but the uh, in terms of setting up with a glimpse of the tracks, but the And it requires like no investment. Like you don't have to worry about having a great landing phase just to hit your R button. You know what I mean? And it's just global presence stops all the words from giving you so much vision, et cetera, et cetera. So overall, it's uh, pretty potent here. Looks like we're gonna get a chance to see the Ramses safe lane Furion. No, or I mean, I mean, I guess it still could be off lane. It but could be because it could be scandal. But th th this is the great thing about Empire when they pick heroes like this. You don't, you don't know for sure which way around they're Wait, gonna it, put it. It could be Ramses bat too, right? It could, it, that's the thing. They're, all three <laughs> of the cores, Reserve they've time. got that kind of special trick up there. Uh, up the scene where they can just switch around the, these heroes. So yeah, I think it's it's most likely still going to be mid bat though, and safe lane Furion. I from agree. what I, I mean, well, oh, they're thinking... Aphidim don't think that though. They think it's going to be what I mean. I guess they're worried about what Scandal playing the mid out core is that more Ramsey's thing to do in the safe lane. Mm, I, it's, I feel like something the Empire haven't really done that much. Yeah, the Alchemist, I'm a little bit unsure of because. I don't know a scandal. I mean, I'm sure he can play it, but I, I don't I think, think he has played it much. I think he I, actually, I think he has. I'm pretty sure I've got the top. I remember seeing a game where Scandal did pick up the out. Is it like one game that they had with the I, Alchemist? I can't remember what it was, but I, I'm pretty sure at least this qualifies. We've seen Scandal play the Alchemist mid. So okay. I mean that. So that, at least one time they've done yeah. it. Yeah, and so that that means they're thinking it's uh, well, I guess again it could be Ramsey's bat afterlife nature's profit, but at the same time probably more likely to be afterlife uh, bat Ramsey's nature's profit. Uh, but at the same time, the, the bat rider picks. I feel that. More than often, it has, has actually just been Scandal playing it in the mid lane. Yeah, and against the Moran as well, I, I feel he thinks that that's kind of a, a matchup that he can play well in. Yeah, for sure. I don't think that Marana bat is really lopsided for one hero one way or the other. Uh, it's going to be a bit easier for him to avoid ganks if he plays the bat mid. I mean, we have seen Nature's Prophet mid in the past, but I think that's maybe a little bit too far-fetched. A lot easier for the Earth Spirit to rotate in on. You don't really have the Firefly to be able to get away. So in that regard, uh, I guess the last pick is going to solidify who is going to be playing what here on the side of Empire? I mean, it's going to be a core, no matter what. Because you're either picking a mid-hero, an offlaner, or a safe laner. So it's going to be something that uh, accumulates a decent level of farm. Oh, taking their time here, Empire. Very, very important pick here, of course. The winner of this game are going to be them one game away from moving forward to the Manila Major. Watch him just pick Spectre again and just be like... Uh, they could, I mean, they could. They, they certainly could. Uh, I mean, there's no Dark Seer, so it's not like the offlane is going to be pressured super heavily. You already have Disruptor. You have Furion, who can also TP in for I ganks mean, if you want to put him in the offlane and put Ramses back on that hero. I guess Ember Spirit might be punished a bit too hard by the Knights talking the uh, Spirit silences. I mean, Ramses does like to play that as well. Works kind of nicely with, with the potential. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, I mean, okay, that's different. This is good, and as I said, you know, this series is just going to get more and more exciting as it goes on. And there we have as well another th pick that we're not seeing all the time. We have seen teams kind of flirt with Wyvern pick, but this is Why? going to look to be what a, a safe lane, a safe lane void as you expected. It is going to yeah, be I mean, carry void. After seeing the Night Stalker, I think it was pretty obvious that okay. it would have been a. It's just not a thing. Well, they, they could, uh, I guess they could have done mid lane Night Stalker, but again, maybe yeah, not against the bat. And it indeed is going to be Scandal Bat. But yeah, these final picks, what do you think? So the Ramsey's Medusa, and then in, in response to that, they pick pretty much straight away after him. They already had a plan. They'd go for that Wyvern. The Wyvern is a bit strange to me. I'm guessing it's a little bit of a an offbeat answer to Bat. So you either want, like, Abaddon, who can dispel the Lasso, Disruptor, which Team Empire themselves have taken away, 
Then you have LC, which they can't lane. What's I mean, that? I guess technically they could, but they would, they needed a support unless they wanted to put uh, the Night Stalker in a support capacity. So you want a hero that has some like instant disable, who also I guess has a decent amount of D push because there's a fear on the other team. So I guess your other option would be like a Rubik, but he's not really as strong in the D push department as a Winter Wyvern. It's just a little bit different from uh, what I was expecting in the pick. All right, well. I'm very excited to see how this works out. Game three here, ladies and gentlemen. Empire versus Ad Adfinim in the best of five grand finals of the EU qualifies for the middle major. Let's get ourselves uh, affirmed with the teams. And, and uh, just the courtesy of the players so we can highlight what they're going to be playing this game. On the side of Empire, it's going to be Afterlife on that offlane Nature's Prophet. Ramses, he's going to be manning up on the Medusa on his safe lane. Carol Scandal on his pretty much signature bat now. He plays this hero uh, to absolute uh, incredible levels uh, of performance. So we can look forward to seeing some great stuff from him. And uh, of course, not forgetting these two key supports. The big playmakers here for Empire. King R and uh, this Disruptor. And Meposhka on that ever so favored bounty and to buy a lot of teams in this patch. Over on the side of Avvinum on the Earth Spirit. Once again, Spartan, we somehow have a brilliant opening to the game uh, just now in game two and, and offered some huge potential towards the latter stages as well. He'll be on the Earth Spirit Spartan. Uh, Madara playing something a little bit different. This faceless void here on the safe lane. Not something that we see all the time but used to be big in the past. We'll see if he's able to keep it relevant now in this patch. Burana is going to be on Thug once again and finally your last two. Skylark on the Night Stalker. Maybe next time on the Winter Wyvern and already going in with the roll in. They're trying to make the kill happen onto Scandal. The arrow is actually going to get whiffed but they might just still find the kill here. Fairy Fire comes out but a secondary void and the final touch there from Thug to bring him down. Miposhka looking for Skylark in return. They're going to Thunder Strike out as well. The Snake Pounces aren't going to be going the way of the Night Stalker. Skylark going to continue to run. Miposhka has been rolled on upon again from Spartan. He has to back himself off. And it looks like Athenum will get away cleanly with that one. Just a 1-0 trade. But Thug finding the first blood. And, and, and he's going to be incredibly happy with that. And of course against, of all people, the opponent mid lane. Taking down Scandal on his Batrider. Yeah, it's going to help him tremendously because it just means he can send out the stick right away. And I don't think he has the completed wand. Okay, no, he doesn't. But he's also going to be able to get himself a salve in addition to that. Looks like Skylark is going to be taking the quick way back to base. He did have to burn his salve because the Thunderstrike was going to kill him otherwise. And Spartan even getting the early D word here in the offlane. So all things considered, add Finnem off to a, a pretty strong start here. We'll just have to see what Afterlife can get done in this off. They want to try and punish the Medusa rolling straight and it's some fantastic body blocking from Spartan. It's still just a level 1 with Medusa. The TP will come in from Meposhka, but yeah, Medusa is it, certainly going to feel a lot of uh, aggression, a lot of hate from from this offlane combination that Afinim had positioned there. Yeah, they're getting a decent amount of damage here on the Skylark. No glimpse though. Deceptor's not level 2, so he'll probably be fine. Well, uh, with the Orb of Venom though. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. TPing in a couple of touches, it will do it, and they're going to find it. Skylark turns around, but the Thunderstrike and the touches from Afterlife. They'll bring down the Night Stalker, and already, I mean, this is just classic Afterlife. He always looks for opportunities to get himself involved, and actually, he's just going to kill himself. He's going to kill himself. He loses 50 gold, but hey-ho, it's a quick way back to base, and a quick way to get himself back up onto that top lane. Yeah, it's good stuff coming out so far from uh, the rotations on the Nature's Prophet. And that's one thing you can always look to when you have this type of lineup, is there's so much mobility. Like, the Bounty Hunter is going to be running around everywhere, trying to gather information. That sets up for the Fury to teleport in. So if you have, like, one hero there, and, you know, you're in mid, maybe it's maybe it's Scandal, maybe it's Rams in the safe lane. You could potentially have, like, a, a plus one or plus two relatively fast. So it's just something that Ed Fenimer are always going to have to be very aware of as the lanes kind of play out. And that's good uh, for them as well. Bottom lane, trying to go in on Ramses again, but Ramses, with the help of uh, the Disruptor, will fend them back off. And is actually going to come down here as well, maybe anticipating uh, Afinim to try and go for an aggressive play again, and I'll see if they can turn around and punish it. Spartan, having to make the long walk back to back to base it. But uh, Ramses, he should be able to keep a, a relatively good hold of the lane now. You know, a couple of points in Mystic Snake. Uh, Nightstalker's got to be very, very careful how close he comes to the creep web because uh, that snake hurts. A couple of bounces and y you're taking huge chunks of the Nightstalker's health. Oh, absolutely. That thing hits insanely hard. Did a few times in a row, I think. Maybe it was like two or three patches. The Mystic Snake got uh, a little bit better. But I think this is kind of what is expected out of Empire's lanes. They need to do very well. During the mid-game, you have to worry about Magnetize. There's a lot of AoE control between the Chronosphere and then Winter's Curse coming in from the Wyvern. 
And then uh, we talked about the vision control already as Skylark, just having that uh, darkness ready and available to use at a, a pretty early stage is okay. Yep, Spartan got some of his rotations. We saw him pulling this off in game one, and game two is going to continue. Sets up a second kill for the side of our Venom and Thug. Now two kills here on the mid lane Mirana. He is looking to be... They didn't uh, even uh, arrow him, did he? Nope, I was just a roll in and a roll in. Yeah. And they need it as well because Scandal is winning the CS game slightly in mid lane. He's got a lot of denies as well, eight denies on the Batrider. So Scandal's certainly having the upper hand here. Maposhka coming through as well. The Flame Break to bring him back. He's still got the jump. So he will be fine getting himself back and into the safe region of the tower. Maposhka still eyes on him. But uh, not really anything to follow through there, especially with Spartan hanging around. And yeah, Maposhka, he's got to be careful how cheeky he is because there is a dust on, on the Earth Spirit if Spartan sees it only. And Spartan always is finding his openings, isn't he? Just manages to find like a, a Tokyo Drift, then hits a hero from max range with the, uh, the the rolling boulder, and just manages to get a kill. So first night, Ad Finum looking to get active here. Right, Poshka, scanning this all out though. Empire will know what's up. They're, they're going to know exactly what's going on here. Oh, they even scouted the ward placement. That's huge. Courier is going to go back. Oh, what a dust. Oh, indeed. And with the kickback, they should be able to get the void off. And indeed, the question is, they, they can't quite kill him. They do have to back off that. Skylark kind of still playing with the idea of coming back in and during this uh, this nighttime phase. There's going to be TP in from Afterlife, though. And Spawn, he's, he's out of mana. He's 20 short, being able to roll himself out. The arrow comes through. Oh, I see the catch on him, Eposhka. They'll turn around with the void. The Star Storm as well. They'll find one kill. Thug now on a killing spree on his Mirana. Now they look to see if they can find for more Skylark. He's still got a fair bit of mana to play with. The Empire, they're trying to chase down Spartan. Flame Break's going to come through. The Glimpse will be there onto Thug to take him away from Afterlife. Scandal still going in on the Spartan kill. He's got five stacks of Nade Palmer. He will be able to punish it. But nonetheless, I mean, Thug, he himself, he did find himself that third kill and keeps himself alive here. Yeah, I mean, we can go back a little bit and talk about the ward placement and sending the courier back and just the awareness that you need to have to realize that there is somebody like the only reason he does it there is because he saw the courier go back and when you see the courier go back there's only one person on the team who can actually see you there this bottom lane looks like Ramsey's is experiencing some difficulties yeah it's got like a spot and they move back from that that mid lane advance and uh, uh, yeah just coming straight back in that's a four-man gank at six minutes that's got to feel pretty bad well, that's interesting. Well, I think, yeah, just caught my Poshka on the edge of it. But Spartan, he's out of dust. Uh, he's trying to bait this one. Yeah, come and get me, my Poshka. Ooh, I can see you, my friend. And straight back in. Oh, no, he kicked him out of range. Oh, no, Spartan. A rare mistake there from the man. Oh, <laughs> my Poshka. That was uh, <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, to say the least. And now my Poshka's going to try and go back in, Madara. He's ended up down. He's now out of mana, rolling back in. They're looking for the kill onto my Poshka. They will find it. Nice three-man stun. I mean, that shadow will allow our to get themselves out, so they do end up killing the bounty, but it's uh, yeah, just been a bit of a messy affair down there on the bottom lane. Uh, just a very fast-paced early game. Kind of expected, though, both team lineups, I think, are a little bit more aggressively postured than they were in game number two, where we saw a lot more, like, late-game, mid-game potential. Okay, Spartan. Spartan, bottom lane. Bam! Thunderstrike catches him out, and uh, a bit of... Bit of an uncharacteristic one from them there. I mean, getting caught out by the, the, the Medusa and the, the Disruptor, just I guess underestimating their control and the, and the damage output they have at this point of the game. Yeah, Mystic Snake is no joke. If you've never played against Medusa before since they buffed that ability, it hurts a lot. It's like every single bounce that you get is 35% increased damage. It's completely insane. Now, Sponsor's actually going to come back down. He really wants to continue to, to toy with this Medusa. Um, and as well, Ramsey's feeling confident enough, so four points in the Mystic Snake, three in the Shield, so none in, none in the Stone Gaze at this point. Mid -towers coming up. Well, I mean, I think it's one of those investments that you make when you really want to be fighting. Half of Skylight's health. Bam. Yeah. Oh, top lane. Oh, looking for Afterlife, and well, they're going to get it. One more touch. In fact, the TP was cancelled there. It's like, right, you're dead, mate. No chance of a savior coming in for the, for the man on, on the Prophet. But a 6 for 3 at the moment. Add Finham still with uh, a slightly better start here. Bottom lane though, going in on Ramses. Add Finham looking to take down another. He's out of mana, out of shield, and with the Star Storm coming down hard, they're going to find themselves another here. One more touch from Skylark. Will do it. So Add Finham, 7 for 3, 8 minutes in. As you said, the pace is quick, the pace is fast, and it, it's certainly favoring the boys on the dire. 
Uh, they just wanted to try to do a lot during the first night phase. Looks like uh, Waves pushing on top, but Pushka should be able to soak a decent amount of EXP from this. I think that with the, like, Afterlife Ninja's Prophet being able to jungle, the next priority list for Empire, just making sure they can get the Bounty and the Disruptor to 6, that's going to be really key. Like, King R is soaking one lane and Mapashka is soaking the other, so they realize the importance of getting the track up and ready before the next night phase rolls around. Because I'd say, all things considered, oh, middle lane. And they train him with the lasso, dragging Thug back, but Thug... He's going to be able to live through the initial uh, advance. Can he get himself out? He's got one charge on cooldown. The tick from the Thunderstrike will do it. And they'll catch themselves out of the Mirana there. So nice first use there of the Lasso to do so. And, and a nice bit of money there going well as well to the Disruptor, ending that, that early streak that, that Thug was starting to get going on his Mirana. And that was 600 gold for a kill at nine minutes into the game. Like, that is actually insane how much that gave away. So, yeah, really big pick off there from Empire. And they always do have that bounty hunter to fall back on during the mid-game once he, he gets uh, off the ground. But still, I'd fend him with a, a slight lead here. Oh, nice just idea. waiting to see what the next move is from them. I'm guessing they're just waiting it out. You know, Yeah. on paper, Night Stalker is like, really good against bounty hunter as well. Because you like pop the ulti, and then you just go around with dust. Whenever he's in a team fight, you can just chase him down. Like Having track speed doesn't matter, because Hunter in the night makes you pretty much just as fast, if not faster than him. And then you just have a really low mana cost, high damage nuke that he can't really deal with. So I think that uh, Ad Venom, they have the tools to snowball this game. Bottom lane, I'm at T. Just four Simbat Rams is on his producer. King R is there behind him though, and he's got level six as well. So maybe kind of hoping that the side of Ad Venom will try and initiate on the producer. Because they do have a chance of turning it around there. Thug, 300 got away from picking up that Midas. So he's a, a bit of a vulnerable part. We'll see if Empire are able to kill him here on this gold advance. And bottom lane, TPs are coming through. So Advenom, they are going to try and fight this. They've got the Chronosphere up. But as we said, Disrupt, he's being patient here. He really is. King Ars just holding on the sidelines. He knows that this kind of play is going to come out. And he may just be enough to counter it. They'll use the scanner, Advenom. They know there's action in the sidelines, but they're going to go in. And there's, oh no, the Chronosphere is with the Static Storm oh as well. Dear. Will be enough for King Ars to hold Advenom back. Spartan still tries to continue to roll over. Now, oh. looking for King oh. he misses the boulder smash. The snake comes bouncing back through. Moonlight Shadow for the side of Venom. They're falling incredibly low here. They do find Disruptor, though. Afterlife's coming with the TP. Scandal's now turned up as well. MNT is spawning and hiding in the sidelines. Thug looking in for the three-man Star Storm. He's going to get it. The smash coming through. Is it going to connect? Scandal looking for the lasso. Will get it, but he goes down himself. So they'll now find Ramses by the looks of it as well, trying to close, and he pops the one charges. It's going to be enough to keep him alive. Rolling from Spartan. They're looking for Afterlife. They get down the void slow. He's got the Sprout up. Anything to break through? Yes, yeah, Skylark chops through the trees. They'll take themselves down a third. They do lose Spartan on the Earth Spirit. And I don't know if it's the team's getting tired, but Adfinim with a, a bit of a whiff of a Chrono and, and Spartan just missing a few too many of his spells there on the Earth Spirit. Uh, they are lucky that they do still end up coming out on top, though. God, that, I think sloppy is uh, an accurate word for that team fight for sure. I mean, I can kind of understand why King Arthur threw the ulti down that way. It, it didn't actually necessarily need to land. It was more just preventing the rest of Ad Finim from running towards the Dusa and just getting the kill. And in that sense, he actually did what he was supposed to do. But, you know, Madara's Chronosphere, a little bit off the mark. Maybe he was trying to zone out a little bit too much instead of just going for, you know, clicking it on the hero. Oh, look at that. Mystic Snake. <laughs> ripping through Spartan. He gets glimpsed back as well. They'll find that. Madara coming in. Eyes onto Ramses. First hit bash. But there's four heroes here on the moment on the side of Empire. They'll sprout him up. He buys his way through with the Quelling Blade. We'll see if they can chase down. Leap forward from Thug. Look for an arrow. The, the tracks are coming out. And Miposhka on the sidelines. They've got dust. He has been dusted. We're going to be able to chase him down. Though King R still there. And uh, they, they'll be fine. But again, I mean, uh, this is... It's a slight edge for our Venom. 12 minutes in, this certainly could be a start of another game where we see both teams just at it back and forth, back and forth, and some really very close, intense engagement. Well, I'd find me to make sure they don't get uh, too overzealous and, and dive. We've seen it happen before in the past. They make like one move, especially against a team with a bounty hunter, that can really cost them a lot. And after watching you know, Spartan in the last engagement, he didn't really land his spells in the proper manner. That kind of stuff can really hurt you at this stage in the game. Because, you know, maybe Advin and walk away with a couple of important kills, but they gave the Bounty Hunter six. He's almost level seven now, because Spartan died, like, behind the tier one tower to him to a Shuri toss. So everything the Empire need is kind of ready to go. Oh, Courier Snipe, actually. Oh, I lie. 
All right. And that did have uh, well, the drum recipe. Uh, and a decent amount there. of money. Bottom lane, Ramsey, he came in fairly deep. He does still have a stone gaze. Uh, they get the chance to get it out, he does, and uh, that would just about save his life. In fact, turning around here, I mean, like Shadow from the Poison Abfit, and they'll be fine. They're going to still have to try and chase it down. King R is there, pops down a sentry. He's going to see Spartan and Thug, and they'll start to get one of the tracks out. Wow, it's going to be whiffed. The Void and Silence for the King R, jumping in with the Star Storm, looking to burst down the Disruptor. Can't quite do it. And look at the Shuriken bounces here. Coming in, Madara gets off the Chrono. Thug's actually been glimpsed back into the Chronosphere here. The burst of the Split Blast, not quite enough to bring down Thug. They'll lose to one Empire now, Finham. So they can move forward for more. They'll lose Moran on the sidelines. Afterlife going for the TP out. Anything to cancel it. They've got the Void just in time. <laughs> he even just dropped the Winter's Curse to make sure this Prophet does not escape. And they will find themselves a third here. So we get another trade at Finham. Three for one. Coming out on top. Radiant's bottom tower. Man. I, these fights are like so scrappy. It's just everyone's in the same place at the same time. Scandal had just purchased his Blink Dagger right there. Unfortunately, he didn't really get to use the lasso. Because I think Ramses is already way too far gone to be able to save in that situation. So I, I kind of agree with you know, him trying to get himself out of there. But Spartan, you got to start landing some spells, but. Because that we've seen a lot of kicks that have been way off the mark. We really have. He's, he's got to be careful. We need that. Well, uh, uh, Finham needs him to perform. Uh, we need him to perform for, for a good game of Dota. And well, this is nice catching out Maposhka. Good silence as well. Stopping Scanner from getting a lasso off. In we go as well. Madara jumps forward. Actually, now being pushed back into the pit. Spawn and track back, and they've taken him down. That's a track gold kill. Now MNT here, here as well. This could be a second one, and it will be. They don't quite get the ability to get the trap back off, but nonetheless, Empire finding themselves a clean two kills. Add Finham without any kind of response. And again, back and forth, back and forth. It certainly is the way that this game is panning out to be at this point. Yeah, and those track kills just give you so much. Bounty Hunter just gets 450 gold from those kills. And uh, interestingly enough, Mapush can actually place wards into the sentry, which means that that bottom ward that was just placed is just going to get instantly dewarded by Ed Finham, so I'm not really sure what the, the point of that was, but yeah, interesting stuff coming in here. See what Madara goes for for his next item. I think Matha Defusal is like crazy good this game, because you're against Medusa. Kind of like double dips on the, the damage that you do. Ooh, 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 thug into the storm. Yeah, see if he's going to be able to weather it. It's not not going to be the case. He's gone. Yep. Nice pick off from Empire. You see an opening and they take it. Midas now done for afterlife. You know, Skylark has been quietly kind of getting his farm on. You know, he's almost got a full Agonims at 16 minutes. It's going to be very helpful for him during the mid game when, you know, you have to worry about that Batrider initiation. You're just always going to be able to see it coming. He gets a gem on top of that. It becomes really difficult for Empire to pick fights on their own terms. There goes Radiant's bottom tower. Now, Ramsey's. As you said, he's just working on that. Yes, a Blink Dagger now picked up by the Void as well. This is going to be pretty crucial in these defenses. If he can land the, these multi-hero chronos, uh, it's going to be very, very hard for Empire to, to achieve much at the moment. They've got the split push going on. Afterlife on his Nature's Prophet, just working on getting the pressure around on the top lane. The four, rest of the four of the side of Empire are all around towards the mid. Curry now back up, so yeah, he, uh, he picks up the completed drums on the Nature's Prophet on top of his phase and Midas. Uh, we'll see. see what the next bit of play is at the moment. Madara. Still kind of playing around on this bottom lane, trying to find what he, he's level 11 now as well on the cro on the uh, on the faces void. And of course, both teams just uh, at the moment there's no it doesn't feel like there's any rush for me for them to find a fight. They're, they're both comfortable in just continuing to farm and playing for the long game. Maposhka starting to make a, a kind of a, a deep movement here onto the the side of Abfinum's map, but uh, he's not going to be able to scout anyone and. And that's how we're just kind of settling down into a, a bit of a passive phase of this game after a, a very hectic early game. Yeah, I think both teams are just like, all right, let's pump the brakes for a minute, assess what we need to do with our lineups. I think right now the goal for Ed Finham, I mean, obviously getting the Agonims and the Night Stalker is going to be huge. Wait for the next night time, because that is going to be a really strong power curve for them. They have the Agonims done now. You know, the Night Stalker just hits level 10. You got the Darkness. You can go for fights because you also have Blink on Madara, so... In the next couple of minutes, I would expect them to try to go for something. They can even go now if they want, just because they can utilize the Ooh, Darkness Peak. Nice smile cut from Empire. Straight onto Spartan with the last out. The Corn Embrace, uh, it's going to protect him a little bit, but he still goes down. They drop the Static Storm as well, just no messing. 
No chance for the, the Saman to disappear there. We go track into Glimpse. Amante's brought back. He'll drop the Winter's Curse. Isn't enough to save him. And Empire off the back of a very nice smoke. Getting themselves to. And Ramsey's now sitting on 2.4k gold on top of the phase Yasha. Very nice pick. Uh, uh, kind of just before that that timing you, you set up, and we're going to look for. They they want to wait for for night time, but Empire they they'll fight any time of the day or night. And uh, we see them just take that that play and, and look for the advantage there themselves. Yeah, ideally for Empire to actually fight during the day, but you know Skylark feels so inclined, he can just pop the ulti at any point just to restrict vision a little bit. Well, you say a little, but it's actually insane, like, how much of a difference it makes when the ulti's active. You, you pretty much can't see Jack when that thing's on. It's really, really hard to play into. And that's why we obviously saw the prioritization of banning it out last game when uh, they had Bounty Hunter. But yeah, it's, it's still kind of scary for both teams, because it, it's only going to take one or two fights to really burst the game open. Because with the Vlads, you know, Ad Venom can take Roshan with the Void, they can tank it up pretty easily. Empire, they can do it by just having a Medusa. You stand there and tank it up. You got some Treants as well, so it's pretty safe from both sides. Just not necessarily the fastest killing speed. You're going to need to get some objectives uh, if you're Advent first, killing the mid-tier one. Whereas Empire, all they need to do is just win a fight. And Empire, they're going to look for a fight again now. With the Darkness wearing off. They'll look to use this daytime to jump in for some of the action. Eyes on the mid lane, see who's going to come forward. Let's see what they can find. Ramsey's revealing himself here. Maybe trying to pull some uh, some action out of Abfinim. Looking for a bit of a bait. Abfinim themselves, though, uh, I think they're kind of aware of what's going on. They back up to the high ground. They're gonna they're actually going to go for a Moonlight Shadow themselves. And oh, we'll see if this catches Empire off guard. They've already popped down the sentry mid. I think Abfinim are aware of that. They're going to look to move elsewhere. Wrapping around towards the bottom. And uh, Roshan is back up as well. So it'll be interesting to see which, uh, which team tries to contest that. Uh, I think... At night, it's incredibly hard for Empire to contest the pit, just because you have such a huge radius of vision that's given to you. That I think that Adventum might feel confident enough to either go like, uh, I guess they're just gonna try for a dive right now. You can see Empire slowly backing behind the tier two Madara, trying to finish off this tier one. I mean, he would really love the side of Empire to try and jump in on. Try and look for that bait. Time walks off some of the damage here from Nature's Wrath. Obviously just getting the vision out. Oh, it's an illusion they've actually rolled into here. Spartan, he's been rumbled, and now Ramsey is moving in with the Stone Gaze. Track coming out, the Stone will hold him back, but Spartan, he's trapped himself up here in the Static Storm. Chrono comes out from Madara, as he could <laughs> keep Spartan stuck here on the sidelines. Spartan's still living through this initial attack. In fact, Meposhka, can he get himself out? Madara, time walking forward. Luna finish off the bounty, he'll still get it though, regardless of the Sprout. On the back lines though, Empire, they've already picked off two, and now with the last ones to Skylark, they're looking for a third one. Cold Embrace from MNT is not gonna save this man though, as Empire surrounding the arrow. Actually, Thug's turned up. Thug might be able to turn this. He finds himself a second in return. They're going to lose a fourth though, and Empire, they will hold a very, very good defense here off the back of an Abfin and Smoke that was incredibly aggressive. We saw them position themselves. A little bit of an unfortunate initiation as they go in straight away with the roll onto what was a Batrider Illusion. Um, and, and just off the back of that as well, the Chrono kind of comes out. It kind of trapped the Earth Spirit in an awkward position. And, and four for two trade. The trade is there. And, and Bouncy, 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 the money's going to be more than there for the, for the side well, of the Well, he was dead, to be oh, fair. Okay. So he, di he didn't really get that many uh, tracks off during the fight. I think maybe one, if they were lucky, honestly, because for that bounty kill. He dove oh. into the tier two tower to make sure the push was dead. But that is thug. potentially some bounty gold. Yeah. Three stacks of napalm on the boy. And that, that certainly will put you some money in the bank. That certainly will indeed. Afterlife actually coming in as well. Just seeing if they can find themselves some more, but I've been him. We might shut it up and back backing themselves out of here. Dyer's mid tower. Well, Empire seemingly getting uh, the better exchanges here during the early mid game. Ad Finem wanting something to say about that though. They have the gem now too, so they can just go for the dewarding mission, which I think is uh, probably the right play against Batrider and Fury. And if you can restrict the vision control, they feel less content, like split pushing. It's a lot harder to initiate as well. But man, this this game is getting very out of hand. I think, like already Mjolnir done on the Nature's Prophet. We've seen how much damage this hero can do during fights if left alone. We've got... I've got the eyes on Afterlife here. Cliff jungling. It can kill you. 
It really can. Uh, actually, it might, kill, might kill Spartan. I feel like it's a couple more put. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. He's Cliff, not even gonna die. Cliff jungling OP. Everybody, start Cliff jungling in your pubs. Please don't. Don't actually. say that. No, sorry. Sorry. Please, please, don't. please. Just don't do just, that. Just don't. Unless you're, I mean, uh, if unless you're, you're a, unless you're a professional. Yeah, I mean, the only reason Cliff jungling is okay is because no one else on his team can actually kill Ancients that reliably except for the Dusa. And the Dusa has better things to do than kill a, a single stack of Ancients. So it's just trying to be efficient, Owen. It's not just Cliff jungling for the sake of Cliff jungling. Oh, whatever it is, it is some good stuff. It is some good stuff indeed. Uh, that's an interesting sprout, but uh, nonetheless, I'd... they'll move in. Yeah. Okay, Mirana, popping oh, the ulti. Oh, Moonlight boys, they've got the sentry out though. Empire, they are prepared for this. The arrow's gonna catch out Ramses. We'll see if Alfano can do anything. They'll jump for Madara, gets the Chrono onto three on the back. Like, huge Chrono here, but Ramses still gets off the stone gaze. Now starts to chunk through them here. Lasso onto Madara. Spartan tries to run a magnetizer where well, the static storm is there though, and Alfano just crumbling here to the power of Empire. Two a fooled. They'll glimpse back Thug. He's stuck up as well. The right clicks come through. They'll lose a third on Alfano. They may just lose a fourth. MNT tries for the TP out. The Shuriken's there. They're going to find four heroes. They lose one. Only the Scandal Batter out of their head back into the pit. And Empire really, really bringing the A game here. It's a nice, nice gold gain there off the back of that one. They're now on a 10k net worth lead. It's going to be more after they take down Roshan. And we can see just the power of Afterlife and Ramses sitting on a very comfortable amount of gold here on these two cores. I don't really... Alright, so on paper, you could look at FNM's lineup and say that they might have a little bit of late game potential with the Void and whatnot. But if you look at the way they're itemizing, he's not itemizing for the late game. He's itemizing as if he were like the impact Void where you want to try to fight. And the rest of the team is also not really that farm oriented. Like sure, your Mirana has Agonims and whatever, and that's fine. But against late game Dusa with Ethereum, you're just not really going to have the damage. So with the way they've itemized and the fights that have gone so far south for them, Empire have a, a substantial lead. Like, it's obviously reflected in the Golden Experience, but also because of their lineup and what it's capable of doing. On bottom lane. Thug just, just leaping away from Ramses. And it's getting scary and scary. There's actually going to be a Yules picked up here uh, by Disruptor. Uh, not something that we see all the time, but, but something that, of course, is going to be nice against this lineup, especially, you know, with these Sarnasks coming out from the Night Stalker and Earth Spirit. He's catching out the disrupt on the back lines, and, and King R needs to get his spells out, because we're seeing there how huge a good Static Storm could be. It really can secure the team fight for Empire. Yeah, it's just a nifty way of dispelling yourself. It's pretty yeah. cheap, cheaper than Lotus Orb. A Force Staff is okay, but doesn't really let you get the spells off. Oh, they'll get the, the boulder smash out, but oh, look at Scandal just jumping in, ripping Spawn away from the sidelines. Ramses, he's got the stone gate. Spawn has been called in brace, but the Nature's Wrath bursts through, bringing down the Earth Spirit. And now with the fortification, Outfit they've got to try and hold this, but Empire, they're looking very, very strong at this point of the game. Just 26 minutes in, Ramses now knocking on the tier threes. Then Moonlight shouted up, trying to get themselves in position to fight. Thug closing in nice and close. There's the Star Storm. Now jumping for Madara. Look, he goes for it again. Catches people off on the back lines, but it's only going to be the Bat Rider here. Ramsey's still alive through this one. Madara getting taken down by looks of it. The Star Storm coming through. Madara is going to be picked off by Afterlife. Scandal gets himself off to the back lines, and Afterlife blinks in, chasing down Thug, trying to run, trying to hide, but Empire again. Just forcing, splitting Adfinim apart. They'll find themselves the Night Stalker as well as the Marana on top of the Void. And now the buybacks come out. Faces Void getting himself back in. Winter's Curse onto Miposhka. But already with the with the Magnetize, it's doing a lot here. Miposhka's already gone down. Ramsey's still frontlining this one, just sitting there. The Mystic Snake bursting through them. They just can't kill this Medusa at this point of the game. Maybe with Skylight turning up, they can as well. The Bashes from Madara are real. After Laughing King are still playing around on the high ground. There's your Yules holding back the Night Stalker. They really want to try and finish this, but the Kinetic Field, the Control from King Ars there, and on the back lines, you're losing your Winter Wyvern. Ramses finds the shots down, and now he moves in for more. Madara's trying to go for King Ars, but the bounces. The Mystic Snake, he's going to be able to find the Void with the Thunderstrike. Skylight's got to get himself away. It's a 3 for 3 trade at the moment. Ramses chasing this down here with the Scardy touches, but the Creeps blocking him up at the moment. It looks like Skylight will be saved. No, Afterlife TP's in. He's got a Sprout as well. Blinks forward. There's the Miona Prog. He'll pick up the gem. Picking up the bounty there, and, and this could be an opening because that, of course, was a dieback on the face of this void. You've got your two heavy pushers still alive here. Afterlife from Ramsey's on the front lines. They'll head up into the base, and they'll look to start to take down the Rex on the bottom lane of Abfidim, who have only got two heroes up to defend. And another incredible fight for Empire, and Ramsey's Medusa is absolutely destroying them here. 
I mean, there's so much synergy in their lineup. You have Glimpse Vision with the track. Same thing for the Bat Rider. It can help set up for the ganks. Fury and TP Zen adds to every single engagement that you go for. You know, Empire just seemed to be like a well-oiled machine in this game number three. And Ad Finum, even going back to the one engagement they made outside of the Tier 2 tower on Empire's side of the map, they, they knew they had to play aggressive because their lineup and the way that they've itemized is totally mid-game centric. Like, okay, maybe you can argue that the Marana can farm a little bit, but you don't really want to go late game against Medusa with your heroes, especially when your Void has gone in for, like, the Vlads into Blink Dagger build. Scandal, which is scandal, not... scandal. Yeah. It's a sad, uh, sadder spirit right there. But Ari's looking for Cryo, but again, the Yule's King has got a static storm, and Ari comes straight back down into it, and here we go, Rams is with the Stogies, making sure there's no help on the side. They're gonna take the Void down again, and GG, well played, is called! They'll tap out here, and Empire now, one game away from moving forward to the Manila Major. I mean, I, I like this, you know, in the best of five, Abfinim, they realize at that point the game's going to be very, very hard to deal with. They'd rather just tap out, clean the slate, move on to the next. It was a 25k net worth lead at that point in the game from Empire.